Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here. I am back after a couple of weeks of not being very well. We return, there's lots and lots to talk about. And in the little gap where I've not been here, Apple have made a huge set of announcements which really affect the guys who do music production, video production, all that kind of stuff. But today I'm gonna to try and focus on talking about the music production side of things. Now, before we talk about the big one, which is the new cheese grater Mac Pro, let's quickly talk about the new iPad OS and how that's gonna be really interesting for the kind of guys who do music production on the go, which includes me. Uh, we have done a series on audio production on iPads before, and I think this new iPad OS, which is kind of an offshoot of iOS 13, is gonna be a huge deal. Uh, because not only is it going to be faster to work in terms of the efficiency of the programs, that's what they were saying at the developer conference, but one of the big things for me was USB drive support. You'll be able to just plug a USB drive in. If it's an older Mac, you'll probably have to use one of the Lightning to USB adapters, uh, which I have a couple. The older one is USB 2, and the newer one is USB 3. That's the one with the extra Lightning port for power pass-through. Uh, but you would need a USB 3 capable iMac, uh, iPad, which is the iMac Pros, pretty much, and not the regular iPads, but then Pro, Pro Price, Pro Performance. Uh, but that means you can get your audio production stuff on and off iPads much easier than you used to be able to before, and that's a huge deal for me. Uh, they are killing off the old inter-app audio and audio bus specs, but the new audio bus v3 is definitely still going to be supported and it's far more stable than the old versions which i used to really have to battle with so in some ways i'm quite glad to see the back of the old audio bus and interrap audio stuff because they would only work for me half the time whereas the new v3 stuff is much more like what logic uses with its audio units if i remember rightly the back end of it's actually called audio unit v3 or something like that Dark mode's going to be useful for us audio producers as well because you can probably work in bed at three in the morning and not go half blind But that's kind of by the by that's almost kind of a fun thing uh, I can see it being productive in general, but maybe not so much for audio producers before we get on to the big news I want to talk quickly about patreon I know I keep banging on about it But it's a thing that we're involved with that helps us to keep this channel going and keep us keeping the lights on it's a support network where you can help us out, I'd say a dollar a month, and we give back by giving you early access to videos, direct access to me and the guys in the team, and we just, it's the kind of thing that really, really helps us and we can't thank you enough. That's quite enough of that, so let's move on with the show. So, the cheese grater, and my word, the holes in this cheese grater are far bigger than in the previous one. And if you've seen any of the Mac versus PC videos that we've done in the past, I've usually been quite pragmatic about do you really need a Mac? Will a PC uh, suit your needs better? And generally speaking, up till now, the answer has almost always been uh, for power stuff, you should probably be getting a PC. And if you're a mobile on the go kind of guy, then maybe a, a MacBook is the kind of thing for you, maybe. But this week, this could all change. The new Mac Pro. It looks like an absolute monster. Of course, with a price tag to go with it. Uh, this is by far the most expensive Mac Pro in terms of the base model that there has ever been. Not just in terms of price, but in terms of price after inflation. If you look at the entry price of the older trash can Macs and even the older G5 Macs, we're looking at a, a price after inflation of about $3,000 for the base model for the older ones. And we're looking at $6,000 with this new 2019 version, which is quite a jump up in terms of the base model. But then something I've been thinking about is that consumer grade PCs and, and even Macs like the iMac and even the, the lower tier iMac Pro these days, 
they are very powerful compared to what kind of a, a domestic model would have been back when the older Mac Pros were released, which means that the market has shifted. That $3,000 price point now would not be a market for guys wanting a Mac Pro. Uh, quite simply, the minimum spec on the, the big beast is an eight core processor that says Xeon, essentially workstation grade processor, and that's above and beyond what a lot of people need. I have to be quite honest, it's above and beyond what I need, and I do quite a lot of music production stuff. Um, compared to video production, which is and always has been very processor intensive, um, video has scaled up massively over the last 5 or 10 years. 4K, 6K, 8K, HDR, all that kind of stuff is now becoming standard or at the very least very widely used, whereas in audio, we haven't really gone anywhere. Uh, most producers use 44 or 48 kilohertz, some of them now use 88 or 96, but you could have said that 10 years ago. That's not really scaled up in the same way. Yes, people are using a lot more plugins now, but they're still not nearly as resource intensive as video production stuff, which means that to justify audio production on one of these Mac Pros, you've got to be doing some seriously, scarily big projects. I mean, yes, $6,000 for the base model is a lot of money, but I would bet that most music production guys, or even film sound post-production guys who are going to buy one of these Mac Pros are not going to buy the base model. These things go all the way from 8-core to 28-core, and 28-core processing is bananas. That's I mean, if you were to put five or six channels worth of audio on each one, just quickly do the maths there, that's hundreds of tracks of fully processed audio, not literally just playing them back, but having deep, detailed processing work on every single one of them. And that's even with inefficient plugins. A lot of processing, like, say, the, the Stephen Slate stuff, has been designed to be very processor efficient. Uh, the computer that I use behind me is a four core machine and on most mixes, even intense ones, that's plenty because the processes are so efficient now. It's not an issue where you used to have to get a Pro Tools HD system and sticking card after card after card. You don't have to do that now. Although that's a good segue to talk about Pro Tools card systems because this is the kind of target market that these are gonna be aimed at. Um, where the trash can Mac had loads of these Thunderbolt ports and you had to have external this and external that and just a big tangle of bits and external devices and cables everywhere. The old Mac Pro was designed so everything could be in the one box and they've returned to that, which for anyone who needs serious power and at the end of the day wants to just pick it up and move, this is an absolute godsend regardless of the price. This thing has eight PCI Express slots. It can handle six Pro Tools HDX cards, which means that the amount of processing it can do, even without the processor, is unheard of, and it's all in one unit. If that's what you need, this is going to absolutely blow anything out of the water. It's got some serious graphical power if you're willing to pay the money. We don't really need that, but hey, if you want to do some sort of graphical stuff on the fly whilst you're doing audio work, especially as a film guy doing film sound in post-production, I don't know, you might want to do something like that. It might sound a little crazy, but having the possibilities open to you could be a whole new avenue. Someone like, say, Hans Zimmer. Uh, at the moment, as far as I'm aware, he's using the 2013 Trashcam Max, and he's using three of them synchronized together via... I don't know what, MIDI, MADI, all, any sort of uh, synchronization system. And he's the kind of guy who could buy that 28 core version, stick all the uh, HD Pro Tools cards in there, four terabytes of incredibly fast flash storage, over a terabyte of RAM, which is ridiculous, and have one machine and probably a backup in the back room because it's Hans Zimmer and if it goes bang, you can put another one in and press play but that's one machine where they're not having to do seriously complicated 
synchronization and making sure that every single machine works. They just turn it on, load up a project and go. And for somebody like that, that could save hours of time, which think how much you would be paying someone like Hans Zimmer, let's be honest, if he's making a soundtrack for something like Inception or the new Batman film, uh, something, whatever the new thing is there, if he can turn his machine on in his home studio, not even have time to make a coffee before he can start recording and tracking and mixing these ridiculously big film scores, that's the kind of person where his time is worth the crazy cost of this machine. Now, the old Mac versus PC argument, I'm not going to go out and rush out and buy one of these things. Not even on finance, not even if I won the lottery. Because for me, it's not what I do. But am I the niche case here? Am I the edge case? Because I'm the kind of guy that would quite happily build a souped up PC because that's part of what I do, it's part of what we do here. And I would maintain my own system because it's something I like to do. It's something that would be cost effective for me. It's something that I know it, exactly how to configure that and set that up. But a lot of audio producers, with the greatest of respect, that's not their thing. And if they can spend the extra money, I mean, it depends how much extra money it is. But if they can spend that extra money and just have a box there that just works, that might be the exact right solution for them. I'm not even going to talk about the crazy screen with the thousand dollar hinge. That's just madness. But if you want to talk about the hinge, the crazy stand, anything like that in the comments, let me know and I'm sure we can have a conversation there. Any questions you've got, fire away. Anything that you think doesn't make sense in what I'm saying, let us know in the comments. If you appreciated this insight, give us a like, uh, hit the subscribe button. We do loads of these kind of things. We build PCs virtually and in real life. We talk about Reaper, Pro Tools. We do loads of tutorials on how to use them and get the most out of them. And there's so much more coming. There's gear reviews for speakers, headphones, microphones, all sorts of stuff. So, so I hope you stick around for those and enjoy the content. Thanks everybody. I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pulse Studios and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.